Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Do you remember the time I made a giant 3D printed Lego electric skateboard and rode all around on it and it was really fast and had working lights and everything? Well, if you don't, you can check it out in my channel. But now it's time for another themed electric skateboard. And this time I've decided I'd like to build a bat board that Batman would have. And I'd really like to build it like the Bat Tumbler in the series with Christian Bale in. So that's the one where the wheels steer facing inwards on the inside and basically it's a big tank, but we're going to turn that into a skateboard that I can stand on and ride on. Alright, so this is my basic thought about it, it's my quick CAD drawing, and basically that's what it's going to look like, and this is a one-to-one -one drawing so I can measure all the dimensions. So here we can see that it's basically 711mm wide, and it's just over a metre long. So obviously we've got this front steering rig, where the uh, wheels are the other way round to a normal car or go-kart chassis, um, basically so they steer like that and I think those are going to get pushed and pulled by these brackets into the middle and the main board there is made of two layers of plywood so we've got space to put a pusher and a puller to pull the middle of the wheels and these sides and these runners here I think are going to be box section steel and the reason for that is so that the front wheels don't twist because normally you'd have a chassis in the middle supporting the steering wheels as it is I've only got these forks so it's going to need to be made of something pretty tough so when I put load on it those wheels on the front don't twist all over the place we're going to have obviously rear wheels with belt drive again i think this time i'm going to go for two motors but we'll get most of this done and then we'll see how it looks so this is our basic layout which is made of plywood and box section steel so just the pieces laid out this is 50 by 25 mil box section steel with about a 2 mil thickness and 12 mil hardwood ply the whole thing's upside down at the bottom so i'll be standing on the other side and this is the piece which goes on there so hopefully if we bolt through all of the steel that should keep these nice and rigid and we're going to have go-kart stub axles on here which should be really strong. So obviously from a standing point of view the size is pretty good so I'll have space here to put my feet on and um, it should be about the right size obviously with the steering wheels out in front and the drive wheels in each gap there. So before we get too carried away trying to get these stub axles to fit to the steel and bolting it together I should probably sort the wheels out so we can arrange it all on the floor and check that it all seems like it's going to work properly. So I sorted my wheels out here, these are the main drive wheels and these again are going to be 3D printed like my Lego skateboard wheels with 3D printed hubs and 3D printed tyres in Ninja Flex. So I've got um, a hole there for the bearing and I've got a shim there. So the main hub here is going to be printed with the Lulzbot Moore Struder, which is a really fat nozzle, so it'll be quick to build up and really strong. And the shim will be printed in a normal extruder so I can get the accuracy to get the bearing to fit properly. Obviously, if I get it wrong with this massive print, I'll have to go back and do it all again, so it makes more sense to do a separate insert. So the tyres themselves will be Ninja Flex. I'm trying to make those as minimal as possible, so they've got these uh, kind of indents where they fit onto the hub but they're still fairly sizable at around 300 grams of Ninja Flex each. The front wheels have to fit the stub axle like that and again those are broken into two halves. So we've got two halves that can be printed and basically I'm having an inner hub and an outer hub so the stub axles are only long enough for one hub and then we've got the other one that bolts on the front and that's got this interesting little stick on which will be where my pullers attach to actually move those wheels and that means the bearing on that side is fitted internally inside the wheel and you don't see that from the outside but the wheel should be really strong and the tie should be a good fit. Right, so here's one wheel hub, and you'll notice I did some of it in red and some of it in black. I picked up loads of red filament on a sale, so I thought I'd do the ends in black where you see them, and the rest in red, because it's cheaper, basically. There's around one and a half kilograms of filament in this print. So you'll see I've put the shims in and glued those in, and the bearings fit really well in there. We also have a drive pulley, uh, which I've printed separately again, and that will just pop on there and that'll be glued on as well. So that's a T5 belt, and again, I did that in the thinner extruder, so it's nice and strong, and it's nice and accurate. Right, these are my front wheels. Again, about a kilogram and a half of filament or so. I actually did more perimeters on these because of the extra bits of hardware. So these, again, have the hub with the bearing either side to fit my stub axle, and this is a normal go-kart stub axle where you've got that pivot point to uh, allow it to steer. And this is the inner hub part 
which uh, basically fits over the nut on the stub axle so these two will be screwed together and that gives me my 8mm bolt which is uh, put on there with really big washers and that's the piece that I use to actually push and pull the wheels so that I can operate the steering and we still need to get the tyres printed. Alright so I've painted my wood black haven't bolted anything together but I've got my wheels laid out obviously we have a solid back axle and these will be on independent bearings the motor will probably be mounted against this somewhere obviously it's upside down still and the wheels at the front seem to fit and they don't touch each other so that looks pretty good so these stub axles are actually going to be pivoted through the steel they need to go in at an angle which we'll look at in a bit I might cut these off since they don't serve any purpose it's either that or we'll have a feature on here which actually goes with the wheel as it steers maybe some sort of headlamp or a little gun thing like on the back pod bike that pops out of the tumbler these things need to be a bit shorter but there's loads of space to attach the pullers so we should be able to get those wheels to steer quite nicely now what you'll notice about these stub axles is that the uh, pivot points there aren't actually straight they're at about 10 degrees or so um, and that's basically so normally the wheels are this way around with the chassis in the middle that's so as the wheels pivot around they actually lift up and that means they lift up as they steer and they sink to the low point or at least the chassis sinks to the low point um, when they're in the middle and that means that when you let go of the steering wheel in a car it automatically centers because the gravity pulls the car down and it pulls the wheels into the middle so it always goes in a straight line so we need to account for that 10 degrees where we mount them however my wheels are of course are the other way around so they face inward so we now need to make sure we've got that 10 degrees facing the other way on each side so my plan is to cut the box section so we're going to cut down and across and we're going to try and fold out those sides so that we basically make a c shape that can go around this and we've got enough space to account for that 10 degree angle Well, I'm getting there, I just need to uh, try and straighten out those sides a bit, probably with a hammer. Just made a special uh, jig here out of another piece of box section on the top of a machine vise with clamps. So hopefully the cantilever effect of this thing is strong enough here. I could do something solid really, but I don't have a piece of solid steel at the moment. I've now put another piece of box section inside here so now I can uh, compress this and try and get the two sides parallel. Well it's not the best shape it could be, there's still uh, quite a bit of bendy sort of sides in there but it does okay and it should fit my stub axles fine so plenty of space there to drill the holes at the right angle. So I've drilled various holes in my steel, I've drilled those for the stub axle so those are at the right angle, I've drilled holes for my back axle with the step drill there and various other bolt holes which are all 8mm to bolt through to the plywood. Right I've bolted my board together, I've put 8mm bolts all the way through, all the bolts are too long but we'll cut those off or at least some of them but that's looking pretty good, it's looking like a pretty good size and I've got my places there for mounting the stub axles so pretty happy with that so I reckon we should print some tyres and get the wheels mounted. Right, I've printed half of one back tyre and that took 40 hours because it's 80% solid Ninja Flex, you have to print pretty slow, um, so it just took a very long time. Um, I need to do four of them in total, I'm going to try printing a bit quicker, but it's going to take some time to do those and the front tyres as well. So I'm still missing some of the tyres, the front ones and half a back one, which is currently printing at the moment, but I thought I'd put the wheels on and see how this looks, and um, it's looking pretty good actually, it looks like it's pretty strong, so... Looks like it's definitely going to carry my weight. My front wheels are holding up okay, so uh, pretty happy with that really. Let's take a closer look at those though. So these are my front wheels. I should add that the uh, bolts aren't done up at all properly here, so everything will get a bit tighter when I do it, but um, obviously they steer like this. So that one's fine because it can roll back, as is that one. 
For coming forward, of course, the stub axles get caught on my steel frame. So I was going to keep these to try and mount some sort of steerable headlamp on that would steer as I steer the wheel. Not sure if I want to do that really. My options really are cutting a slot in this, that I don't really want to do because I don't want it to become really bendy, or cutting um, a chunk out of the stub axle there, um, or cutting it off completely, which is a bit of a shame because they're quite nice stub axles, but if I cut that off completely, then um, basically it'll be to hinge all the way forward to 30 degrees, which will be the same as that one, so they're both facing the same direction. I decided just to cut a little chunk out in the end of each one, so now this can push all the way past, and if I want to cut the rest off I can, or if I want to keep it I can. So now we can actually steer the wheels to the same angle, and that should allow us to make quite a tight turning circle. It's much better than the Lego skateboard anyway. Right, that's the last tyre printed. There we go, so that looks pretty good. 80% Ninja Flex again, and pretty sturdy. All right, so all the tyres are on, feels pretty solid, and that's basically our rolling chassis sorted. Right, so that's the end of part one. Next time, I'm gonna be putting motorised steering on and motorised back wheels, and hopefully it will be in a state where we can actually give it a little test. After that, there are gonna be cosmetics, so all the angled panels, and a kind of afterburner thing on the back, and lots of other gadgets are coming up. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important to say that all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me, all my videos early, and access to exclusive sneak peeks and pics of upcoming projects. All right, that's all for now.